everybody. Thanks for stopping by Danny Max's kitchen today. So fall is upon us. There is a Christmas in the air. The leaves are starting to change color. They're rustling in the cool breeze outside and you know what that means, right? Chowder time! Specifically corn chowder time. I got some really great local corn from my farm stand down the block. Super, super fresh. Really excited. Really happy to show you guys how to make this. Uh, corn this time of year is perfect, especially in September. In fact, we get corn all the way up through mid-November, so I'm taking advantage of it while I can. Let's get started. Cool guys, so look what we're gonna need for today. We got 10 ears of this super fresh corn, four ounces of chopped bacon here. I have, this is probably like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of fresh chopped marjoram. If you don't have that or don't have access to that, go ahead, feel free, use fresh thyme, use parsley, whatever, whatever you have accessible. You just wanna add some type of an herb element to it. We have one ounce of chopped garlic. I have four ounces of butter here. I have one large onion. This is a yellow onion, or actually it's a Vidalia onion. It's been diced. I have four ounces of flour. This is all-purpose flour. I have a pound and a half of diced red bliss potatoes. We're gonna be using a little bit of cayenne pepper. I'm gonna use two quarts of vegetable stock, eight ounces here of heavy cream. And for our garnish today, we're gonna be using chives. So I have these chives here. This is about a bunch of chives that I've cut in half. Okay, so this is gonna take a little bit, but we have to do it. Let's go ahead and start peeling all this corn. And while we're doing so, I'm just gonna tell you a couple fun facts about corn, which you probably didn't know. Roughly, each ear of corn has about 800 kernels aligned in 16 different rows. Corn is actually a type of grass. It's in the grass family, which I didn't know. I thought that was pretty interesting. And you know how corn has all this uh, corn silk here. There's actually one piece of corn silk for each kernel. So you're gonna have 800 pieces of corn silk. Who knew, right? And also, there's also some uh, different varieties of corn that could actually grow to be 40 feet tall. Can you imagine? 40 feet tall, it's like attack of the killer corn. So go ahead, just really clean that up. You really want to get all this silk off there. It's kind of laborious, it's a pain in the neck, but we will get through it together. Okay, so now that we've pretty much got most of that out of the way, last one, I want you to go ahead and get yourself a knife and I want you to get an extra bowl. What we're gonna do next is pretty important. So let me show you what to do. Go ahead, take your corn, grab your knife, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slice the kernels right off the corn. As so. Really neat, easy way to do this, like just, just like this. Right, don't throw these cobs out because we're not done with them yet. And just do this for each corn. Okay, so we're almost done here. Like I said, save all these cobs. We have a little bit more to do. Cool. Looks good. Set that aside. I want you to go ahead, get yourself another bowl, line it with some cheesecloth. If you don't have cheesecloth, just really go ahead and take a strainer and place it on top of another bowl. And I want you to get a potato peeler. Yes, a potato peeler for corn. Sounds weird, but we're doing it. These cobs still have a lot of juice and pulp in here that we really want to use and we're going to extract all this great corn flavor out of here. So take your potato peeler and just start peeling away and we're going to get all of this extra pulp out of here. And it's really going to yield a lot of juice and a lot of deliciousness that we're going to add to this soup. Really give it that fantastic corn flavor. See, that's all coming off. Who would have thought to use a potato peeler, right? A little time consuming, but it's going to be worth it. I'm telling you, I wouldn't lie to you. It's all coming off there. So go ahead and do that for each cob. Okay, I guess I should have told you guys that this is really messy, as you can see. What, you're just gonna sit there and stare at the corn all over my face? I, I, I know it's there, I'm aware, thanks. Well, I definitely worked up a sweat and all that hard work has yielded this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna squeeze all of this juice out of here now. Look at all that coming out, pure corn juice. This is gonna add a rockin' flavor to the soup. And like I said before, if you don't have this, take a strainer and with the back of a wooden spoon, just really push all this mush through and, and get all this liquid out of here. And once you're done, once you've exhausted all of it, just discard this and put this aside and we're gonna move on. Get out of there. Let's do this. Go ahead, turn on your flame. Let's get it over medium high heat for like 
45 seconds. Add your butter. Mix it around, get it all nice and melted. Looking good and melted, go ahead, add your onions. Mix that around. Get the garlic in there too. And you know what, let's get the bacon in there too, why not? Make our lives easy. Cook this for about four minutes until the onions take on a nice translucent color. This bacon's gonna cook, it's gonna add a really delish flavor to the chowder. Also, you know what, while we're at it, put that fresh marjoram in there. Four minutes. This is what you're looking for. What I want you to do now is go ahead and add the flour. And we're gonna mix that with this butter. And what we're doing is we're creating a roux. A roux spelled R-O-U-X. And what that is, it's a thickening agent. A roux is equal parts of flour and butter mixed together. And it thickens things, whether it be a sauce, a stew. We're gonna let this cook for about 30 seconds. In our case, this is gonna thicken our chowder. You gotta let it cook for about 30 seconds. You get a little of that starchiness out of there. 30 seconds is up. Let's add all of our wet ingredients now. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna use eight cups of vegetable broth. Clearly, this isn't eight cups. I just don't have a receptacle big enough to hold eight cups, so I'm gonna add some more when you're not looking. Eight ounces of heavy cream. And all of that corn juice that you worked so hard on. Really give that a good mix. You want to incorporate that roux into this. I'm just going to mix it all up and we're going to bring this to a boil. So we've come to a boil, as you can see. And as you can see, the soup is already getting thicker and thicker. Let's go ahead and add the corn. Get out of there, all right. And let's add the potatoes as well. We're going to let this cook. Well, first I want you to reduce your heat to say roughly medium. We want the potatoes to cook and get nice and soft. It's gonna take roughly about 10 minutes. So just let this simmer for about 10 minutes. And we're gonna be good to go. Just try and be cognizant to every couple of minutes or so, just give it a good stir because it may stick to the bottom and may burn and it'll ruin the whole thing. Once it burns, you're, you're toast. There's no going back. Also, go ahead and season it up a little bit. Add a little salt, not too much. We're gonna add some cayenne pepper. Give it a little bit of a kick. Always according to your, your tastes and your flavor likes. I like it a little spicy, as you know. Okay, so while our soup is cooking in the back, we're gonna make a little chive oil, which is gonna be a really fantastic garnish for our soup. I'm gonna walk you through it first, or talk you through it, rather, because once I turn this blender on, you're not gonna be able to hear a word I'm saying. So. Really, what we're doing is we're going to take about four ounces of vegetable oil. We're going to season it with some salt and a little tissue pepper. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn the blender on, on a high speed, and I'm going to start feeding these chives in through the top. Okay, so we've let that go probably for about 35 seconds. I wanna get this strained. I didn't use all the chives, I wanted to reserve some for a little bit later, because you know what I always say, presentation's key. So let's go ahead and strain this. And really just push it through. Make sure you get it all, all pushed in there. Doesn't look like I'm gonna get much more out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a squirt bottle. If you have one, that'd be great. If not, that's fine too. Okay, so I just checked. Our potatoes are done. As you can see, they're breaking apart. That's exactly what you're looking for, just like that. Go ahead, turn your flame off. And I want you to transfer half of this mixture into another bowl. So that's roughly half. 
I'm leaving the other half because I want there to be that chunkiness of the potatoes and the corn as a chowder should be. It should have chunks of those types of ingredients. But the other half here, however, we're going to hand mix. Just as so. So as you can see, I've really pureed that completely. It's really nice and thick. And what we're going to do is we're just going to return this to the original batch. And it's going to thicken it up a little bit more, give it more of a chowder quality. Let's go ahead, give it a stir. I do believe we're ready for some plating. Let's do it. God, I love fall time. So I can make really delicious things like this. You can make it any time, but fall is just a really good reason to make it anyway. Let's garnish it up. Little croutons right in the middle. I have a little extra fresh marjoram that I saved from before. That delicious chive oil that we made, we're gonna go ahead and garnish it. Just like that. And just a chive or two. Just off to the side. So simple, yet so beautiful and elegant. Enjoy. Fall is by far my favorite season of the year. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. I hate when it's too hot. And I get to make really great things like this. I'm also gonna make a lot of other fall inspired, warm, earthy, stay at home, under the covers types of food. And you better believe I'm dragging you along with me when I make it. So until next time, Danny from Danny Max Kitchen, see you soon.